Uh, you do know that if you coach mm -hmm. in either of the next two games and get a win, you don't get the win. Don Nelson still gets the win. And that's part of the process. That's where one helps the other. So, um, you know, I'm just going to do the job that I normally do. Um, you know, every now and then during the course of a season, I, I coach a couple games and run a couple of practices here and there. So, uh, so the players have an understanding of my voice and what I look for and what I want as an extension of coach. So really, it's not that new to you what you're going to do tomorrow. No, no. Well, you know, when I, been, I started off my career as a head coach, so coaching is not an, an issue with me. Um, I've already done that. I've coached in the NBA. I've coached games here with Coach Nelson, allowing me to coach games, be it preseason, regular season. So I run practices. So it's not an issue as far as uh, all of a sudden this is brand new. The players say, boy, this is brand new. We've already established uh, how things are going to be done in his absence that I coach the team, I run practice. So it's nothing really that's out of the ordinary. How often have you coached without him even being there? Uh, I've coached a couple, a couple games. A couple when he's been out, uh, got thrown out, and then yes. also with uh, with him. And sometimes when he's on the bench with me coaching, uh, he simply as an assistant. He just sits there and be and makes suggestions like I would do in the course of a game. So, uh, but the understanding of, of what he wants. There've been some games where I've coached where he's been in the stands watching. Um, you know, but it's 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 not anything out of the ordinary. What do you do differently in preparation? No, nothing. I do my same prep. I prep the same way for every game because I always got to know in the event that he gets two technicals, I got to coach a team. So my approach to every game has always been uh, to prepare as if you may have to coach that game that particular night. How encouraged are the coaching staff by the last three games? Uh, very, very encouraged because one, we were, do we were doing things that we are supposed to be doing. The players are moving the basketball, playing well with each other, doing some things defensively that we want them doing. So that's encouraging to see them doing that. And, you know, we didn't get the wins against two very, very talented teams on the road, uh, our last two anyway. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we came back with all the things that we did well in the, in the last two games on the road. We put it all together in a home game, a back-to-back, -back, travel back from the East Coast, and was able to get an impressive win. And then is it even sweeter that you could point the defense as being the reason for the Well, game? that's going to kind of be our calling card. You know, we're trying to build the foundation first. You know, we've gone from ground zero, building a team to play defense at a nice level every single night. And when you do a certain amount of things correct the right way, that's always impressive. You, have, you might have eight guys for both games, maybe even seven, mm -hmm. back to back on the road. You're an up tempo team. I mean, will you not uh, try to pace yourself? No, we, we got to play the way we got to play the way we play. You know, that's how we've done it. Uh, we had the end of the year last year. We were in that situation a couple of times, but we have to still play our style. Uh, the, the crowd will dictate a little bit, you know, how the game is going and how the team is running the opponent. But for the most part, we have to still do the same thing that we need to do because we have to take advantage of, of scoring opportunities when we have those scoring opportunities rather than trying to slow things down too much to where good teams, defensive teams that we're going to face, um, they will take you out of some things if you don't take away, if you don't take advantage of the first opportunity. So a good defensive team would be uh, uh, more effective against you guys if you slow down the pace? Well, they have, yeah, because they can put their best, some of their best defensive players on, on our scores and kind of negate some of the things that we can do. So we have to keep them in a faster pace, not just faster pace, we talk about shooting the basketball, but a faster pace with our movement. You know, getting up the floor and getting the ball to open people as opposed to having to sit down. And you know, we don't have a post guy, so we don't have the luxury of in a half court game to put the ball on the box and allow a guy to make a play, get a foul or get a score there. Can you, have, uh, can you get as much done in seven, eight guys, seven guys in practice versus uh, Yeah, because, oh, that, that, really, in the game, everything comes down to a three-man, three-on-three anyway. So this is perfect right now because you only have six, seven, eight guys in practice, so you can break down things uh, in a certain area of the floor when, uh, when those things occur in a game. Because when you look in the game, a pick and roll, you got four players involved, one player's going to be out of the play. It's pretty much when you break things down from three-on-three uh, three and four-on-four, four, that's how the game is played. Can you talk about how unbelievable Dirk is playing right now? Well, you know, one, you know, he's been an all-star. He's, he's an all-star. He's the MVP. So he has all those things, the ability to play at a high level. And, of course, Jason Kidd is playing not too bad. But he's making shots, which open up another opportunity of, of a driving lane or a passing lane uh, for a guy like Dirk. So uh, he plays at a high level. The team goes at a high level. We expect him to play great. It won't be anything that he won't do. He won't have a bad game. may have a bad three minutes, may have a bad quarter. But he's going to, because the volume of shots that he's going to get, that he's going to touch, is going to be the plus for him. Coach talking about how even though you're down to eight guys, you can't change the way you play. you got to get up and down the floor. How important is it against Dallas and San Antonio that aren't necessarily running teams to get up there and just run it down their throat? 
That's uh, very important. You know, we talked about that today. Um, the two like, older teams, experienced teams. So we don't want to get in the half court against those two teams because they're very good in the half court. And uh, so we got to get up and down like we've been doing. Um, it's been working out for us real well. So we got to continue to share the ball, just run, be scrappy on defense. You were in college when Dirk won his MVP, but have you ever seen him play better than he is right now? No, I don't think so, man. He's playing really phenomenal right now. Uh, no, he's always been a good scorer. He's always been a guy kind of take things from out of his game, try to put it into my game. So, uh, you know, he's, he's got to go try our best to slow him down, um, him and also Jason Terry. What can you tell us about their reserve French guy off the bench? Bobo, I believe it is? I uh, spent a little bit of time with him uh, before the season um, at the rookie transition program. Program. He's a soft-spoken guy, but he can really play. He can score. He's fast. Um, you know, I think he got a bright future in the NBA. Uh, how impressed with you were you with Chris Hunter on Friday? Oh, I was very impressed with him. I told him, you know, uh, he came in very poised. He was really physical out there, and he got soft touch around the rim. So, you know, any big man like that has a place in the NBA.